I got just like a few foundational questions first. Can you kind of give a brief overview of what your platform is going to be? Okay. Uh, well, the first thing I think that's important is just from the point of view of Texas. Texas has no representation in meetings that occur right now in the United States Senate because the United States Senate, uh, because Washington is partisan, because the United States Senate uh, has uh, total control by the Democrats and total by the majority. When there is a meeting that takes place about the appropriations of Fort Bliss, there is no Texans in the room. Jay Hutchinson and John Corey are in the room. And meetings take place about other military bases, you know, about the medical center here, about the health insurance programs, whatever. There are no Texans in the room. So the first thing that must happen for the benefit of all Texans, whether you're Republican, Democrat, or whatever, is you ought to have a Texan in the room. And that means a Democratic United States Senate. Secondly, if you're going to have a Democratic United States Senate, you ought to have one uh, that I think is sensitive to minority groups in Texas. It's easy to be sensitive to majority groups, no problem. But it's a minority group. So my history, my entire history has been uh, absolutely one of the best records ever of not only hiring of minority Texans, but uh, as control of public account, but of uh, contract, minority contract. I still have the best record of minority hiring and minority contracting that has ever been achieved since life in government in the state of Texas. It's just no one has been that. What do you think, if you can kind of frame it, what do you think are, are say, three of the top issues uh, in this particular race in terms of, you know, Texas selecting? Well, one of the top issues is going to be health care. I mean, we, we have to make health care <coughs> available to every American if you're going to save local hospitals. I mean, right now, local hospitals are having to say uh, the most expensive health care is emergency room health care. People that don't have insurance have to go to emergency rooms and, and, and get that care. So one of, the, one of the most important things we can do is, A, make sure that all of those people that, have, uh, that don't have health care have health care. That winds up saving you and me $1,200 because people who have health care now uh, are having to pay about an extra $1,200 a year to cover the cost of either through property taxes or some other way of insurance premium uh, for folks that don't have health care, for bills and hospitals and things like that. And health care becomes a critical part of what this is about. The kids that I was talking about have to be well educated. Paid the price, played by the rules, and, and it ought to be an outcome. 
I don't believe, Alan, we did the job of immigration enforcement and border control, we did the job of the United States federal government and the border control. It is not the job of the, of the county of El Paso. It is not the job of the city of El Paso. And it is not the job of the city of Houston. There are only three cities in Texas. And that is the city of Houston, that is the city of Carroll County, Farmers Branch, that actively tell their police officers, go find Hispanic folks and make sure that they're not really alien. And, and the guy that started that in Houston is Bill White, who is my Democratic opponent for this. And so if you've got folks, if you've got folks here in El Paso that are Hispanic, that are supporting uh, Bill White for the United States Senate, we need to ask them to call up the international president, national president of Lula, and ask her why she uh, boycotted and questioned uh, White's speech to Lula, because he's one of only three cities, the other two are kind of right-wing cities, he's one of only three cities that actively have their police target, target these folks. And that's one of the reasons that Sylvia Garcia and every other Democratic County Commissioner in Houston endorsed me instead of the mayor of Houston because they just simply don't believe uh, that that kind of stuff is, is fair. And, 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 frankly, stereotyping, stereotyping the Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. um, final question. Well, actually, I got two more questions. One of them is political reality is Texas has been for quite a while a Republican state. How do you like your odds of winning? Well, I tell you, this is this this is this is an election perfectly made for me. I tell you about this. No Democrat has uh, no Democrat in this race has a better name ID than I have, and no Democrat has ever posted higher numbers statewide in the last 10 or 15 years. The last Democrat that, that had higher numbers than me, I was going to say Ann Richards, but frankly, my numbers were higher than, than Ann's. The reason that happened, the reason that I lost back when Republicans were in the paint by only one percentage point, and Gary Morrow and Tony Sanchez lost by 20 and 30 percentage points, was because the independents voted, me, voted for me in huge numbers, so I had Democrat and independent. In this race, it's a special election. It's not a Democratic primary, not a Republican. So all Democrats, Republicans, Independents, all vote together. Those Independents, if history is an indication, are going to vote for me along with the Democrats and moderate Republicans that, that I think consider Texas first. And it is a tailor-made election um, for, for a Democrat that can get independent votes to vote. Final question, why should El Paso win this? What will they get out of supporting uh, you for your, your campaign? You, 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 get, you get someone that has been loyal to El Paso. You get someone who just hasn't started coming to El Paso in the last three months. You get someone who has worked with your state senator and state representatives, produced the border report that resulted in uh, children's, that was resulted in this big hospital out there laid out an entire plan to get someone that has written uh, work with Anthony Trujillo when he was at the Select Independent School District and designing uh, future plans for that school district, the Socorro, the Paso School District, uh, used a lot of state resources to make sure that the school districts were the best in, in the state, and I have to believe they are the best in the state, and I say that in every speech that I give, every speech in El Paso, I'll give that speech in the calendar and talk about Anthony Trujillo the school district. You get somebody that believes in El Paso, that has always believed in El Paso, and didn't just arrive here this morning. All right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.